people in there. Okay, that's nice. And we are live on YouTube. Can you see us, people? Oh, look. He's he made here. it. 8 p.m. He's, <laughs> He's not amused by your angry text five minutes early. Live streaming can be. <laughs> no, okay. I knew what you were doing. I knew what you were doing, mate. Let's make sure. See us? Say, uh. Papa oh, yeah, we're P here. I is balding. You see us? Okay. Wait, are we live? Yeah, we're live. We're live, mate. What a disaster. <laughs> we couldn't wait we for you. We haven't even jingled longer. or anything yet. If people even knew how sloppy this operation was. Oh, it's it sloppy. Oh, boy. All right, should we go? Should we do the thing? It's yeah. live, baby. They're watching. Well, jingle us in. Let's go. Come on. Except your lighting, your lighting in your new house looks trash. It looks like my lighting every week. <laughs> you look vampiric. <laughs> vampiric. That's what I look like normally, matey. You guys. Hey, Forrest, where are you? Yeah. I am at the in-laws in San Francisco. Yuck. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> Wild times. It's not me. It's the tech. It's a jingle. Wild times. It's a jingle. There we go. Jingle. Wild times. This is sad. It's playing. It's playing. Woo! Here we go. Yeah, episode, episode number eighty-two. <laughs> jingle was a mess up. Papa B was actually not late. He was technically here at eight p.m. on the dot, which is that's right. Pretty much late it's when you're doing a live. Um, what can we say? We're doing it. We're here. Uh, it is the Wild Times. It's a live episode, special episode, number 82. I'm your host, the broologist, Horace Volante. Fresh out of the woods, still got my neck knife on. That's right. I carry my little tiny pp size neck knife when I'm in the woods for mushroom hunting. And <laughs> joining me is the vampiric Ritep, looking very ghostly and white. Looks like yeah. Casper's yeah. special uh cousin. Um, what the hell you, Ritep? Where is this light? It... Shut your fucking mouth, sir. Hello. I'm happy to be here. Uh, welcome to all the brosters who are already talking shit. Uh, is Ritep in the wardrobe from Narnia? Uh, somebody Dan said that. Daniel Cool room... said it looks like his ex's heart empty. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's my favorite. Uh, I'm good. Happy to be here. Sorry, didn't mean to uh, tell you to fuck off just so early in the podcast. Exactly. Love you guys. Yeah, no, it's true. Good. Cheers. Good start. And joining us in this very messy intro of a podcast, as always, not that late, the lovely Patrick DeLuca, the producer. What's up, Pat? Hey, man. I have one thing to say to you, Forrest, now that Halloween... Hollow Jesus. Uh, no, Halloween's over. That's part of my story, Ritep. Can we start this over? Is there a way to yeah. cancel alive? No, he's squirrely. Dude, it, it's like a rabid squirrel with him right now. He can't be harnessed. You're, you're fucked. But, Forrest, Ritep, I don't know if you can see here. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Are you drinking red wine? Everywhere you go. Yeah, oh, the decorations are up. No way. Oh, yeah. Thanksgiving, the Christmas decorations are up. Wow. I'd said it on the podcast. Halloween ends. It's Christmas time officially. I encourage every Brosner to embrace this. It is right. my spirits are astronomical. <laughs> We're what are you gonna be a in a good mood for the next month and a half, everybody. It's a fucking miracle. A holiday miracle. <laughs> yep. Uh, Love it. What uh Rutep, what are you drinking? I got myself here. So we had I had some some friends invited themselves over yesterday, but it's great because they brought a bunch of booze, and this is some hard kombucha they left in my fridge. Oh, nice! And, uh, there you go. It's got probiotics, so I consider it healthy. Okay, all right. Well, I am up in Northern California. I've had a very confusing week. Um, first, I was in the Yucatan for Mr. Mitchell Long's wedding. Sorry, you couldn't make it, Pat. Um, it was a, it was a very good time. We did a, a lot of hanging out. I ended up emceeing the wedding impromptu. So yeah, this is a story. Um, yep. <laughs> story yeah. time. So I, I'm one of the groomsmen, right? There's, there, there's five groomsmen, five bridesmaids, whatever. 
we have a lot of fun. We stay up drinking late nights, all that kind of stuff that happens at a, you know, three, four day destination wedding event. And um, we get to the wedding, beautiful setting. Mitch looks great. Ashley looks beautiful. The whole thing goes down and the wedding ends at like 530, right? We have dinner. Great. That's over about like 630. Now it goes from 630 until 1 a.m. is the plan. And by about 830, everybody realizes there's no MC. There's just a DJ. So it's literally from 30 till 8 30 it's nothing but music no no games no like talking you know first dance none of that stuff's happening so um energy's starting to fade on the dance floor a little bit because they're just dancing with no hype man so uh me being me and having had several cocktails i walked over to the dj area and i was like hey you got a microphone it's like yeah sure do i was like let me see that sucker and uh from then on hype man I, hype man did and see the rest of the wedding <laughs> dude i so i went to our friend miles's wedding who you met you took us out on your boat once yeah i know Miles. yeah so we went to their wedding in florida i was there i'd been drinking at the pool all day and uh this lovely woman comes up to me and said are you patrick yep she said so we just found out the, the singer of the band isn't down to MC the wedding will you do it same exact scenario dude except no someone someone asked me nobody asked you yep. <laughs> <laughs> um but so I'm doing it. I've been drinking and I'm having some fun. I'm doing some jokes. No one knew how to talk into the microphone on any of the speeches, which was a they, they hold huge problem. They're like down yeah. here and they're talking. <laughs> yeah. And then they, they yeah. point the mic out and keep talking like while they're gesturing and then comes back to the mouth. It's yeah. But then I said I made a joke because it was time <laughs> for uh, the, the, the bride to dance with her father. Her father was deceased, unfortunately. So she was going to dance with her favorite uncle, right? Nice. And so I said, well, here's, and I just wasn't thinking. And I said, well, here's the part of the wedding that no one looks forward to the first dance. <laughs> she didn't talk to me for six months. <laughs> I was like, you didn't pay me to do this. Like it's I did this. Joke, by the way. It's great joke. <laughs> Nobody likes that. You just sit there and watch two people. Die. The bride and groom don't like that, by the way. They're <laughs> right. But dude, let it's me just really terrible. quickly say something. I think one of our old school, original first podcast listeners Rowan Roberts is claiming that he got married as well on Halloween. He's a big time friend of the podcast. He made the Lemley oh, bookmarks. Hey. Rowan, yeah. congratulations, yes, man. Sir. Um, where were the invites? <laughs> he he says he got married at his local aquarium. That's actually Ooh. really cool. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. Really, yeah. really cool. Were there um, octopi in the background? Nice. Well, that's great. Yeah, so we had fun. We had a good time in Mexico and then left Mexico on Friday took a late flight all the way to San Francisco, picked up a car and drove straight up to Mendocino County, which is like four hours north of San Francisco, getting in really, really late. Yep. And uh, just spent the weekend, um, just spent the weekend mushroom hunting, which was absolutely epic. In fact, because I figured I knew we were doing a live and the brosters might not be familiar with them. I'm getting a gazillion questions. I just yep. brought a couple little uh, little piggies, little number one, buttons to show what they look like the porcini that we hunt and these are baby ones because the big ones uh are older so they go off quicker so we have to cook those much more quickly but these ones last a long time what, those what, are are those babies, what do those babies taste like man they look delicious and interesting oh walk me through um, it now what's the texture in your mouth right now what's is the mouth like, feel yeah what's the mouth it, so these are one of the very few mushrooms that you can eat raw and they're actually delicious raw i mean they taste very much so like a mushroom raw. And what I mean by that is they're earthy, they're they're flaky, you know, they're very sort of earth sponge-ish. But the difference between, say, a porcini and basically any other of the good eating mushrooms, the chanterelles, the morels, so on and so forth, these things taste like a damn steak. Like before okay. the own burgers Love were that. a thing, this was the mushroom, this was the this was the <laughs> alternative, right? Like you you slice these guys, you throw them right in the pan, butter and salt, little garlic, and you get yourself a steak of mushroom it's a it's a treat it's absolutely how, how many did you get uh because i saw the picture on your insta uh it looked like what about like 80 or something like that uh yesterday we got about 70 pounds um, wow between four of us picking and it was kind of funny so we went to this area um where we always go like my, my group of friends and i got there nothing no fungus like just like dry there's a few like shitty mushrooms around, just terrible. And we're like, how? Northern California has been hammered with rain. Like, you know, we do all these sort of like pseudo calculations where you're like this much rain over this many days, this many warm periods, like 
this is the time to go, which is why I literally changed my ticket from Mexico to fly into Northern California to hunt mushrooms. And um, I was like, this is like, you know, I drove all night, it cost me like an extra 200 bucks just to get here, not to mention like the fees to stay, like what a disaster this was. So get in the car, drive another hour north further than we were expecting to go, hike for three and a half hours. My one buddy finds one like mushed up. Old yeah, yeah, yeah. Fail. Like disgusting. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, this is a complete bust. So we're like, all right, let's head back to the cars. You know, we'll make a break back for where we're staying and make some lunch. And Patrick, you know what I get like when I'm kind of focused on something and don't want to give up on it. Um, yeah, you turn into a real see you next Tuesday. Yeah, no, exactly. So they're walking back towards the cars and I just take off running down this gully because I'm like, fuck this. Like, I'm not going back towards the cars yet. Like, I was like, I'll meet you guys at the cars. And so I just take off, like, you know, just hop, like cruising. And they're my friends. So they're used to me acting like that. So they're like, yeah, well, we'll never see him again. Um, and I had my own car. So they're like, ah, fuck him, you know, whatever. So I took off, disappeared for like 40 minutes, call my friends. This is a funny story, actually. And I'm like, hey, where are you guys? They're like, we just got back to the car. Like, what's up? Like, you know, what shitty thing are you going to tell us to do? And I'm like, well, I'm over by the highway. Just found a dead deer. And they're like, what? And I'm like, just found a roadkill deer. Ticks are still on it. Totally fine. Let's eat it. And they're like, what? And I'm like, this is a foraging trip. We haven't found a single fucking mushroom. <laughs> get over here. Yeah. We're going to pick up this roadkill. So my one buddy actually works for the state. And he's like, I don't think that's legal, blah, 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 blah. Like, let me look it up. And like, what we a buzzkill. Yeah, we have this long back and forth about it. And basically, eventually, they're like, no, we're not going to we're not going to eat the deer. Like, fuck you. And I'm like dragging this deer through the woods already. And then I'm like, all right, fine. I will not fall. Yeah, I'm like, all right, I won't I won't meet you guys back at the car. So they hang out. They're like, we're going back to the house. Like, we know you're not coming. We'll see you whenever you get there. They hang Can out. I just interject for a moment? This is how you get dysentery, right? Correct. This is how that <laughs> happens. Know. This is how you get something for sure. Um but uh, anyway, so yeah, they hang up and I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll start making my way back to the car. Cause I've now like run like two miles in the opposite direction. Um, and now I'm dragging a deer through the woods. Uh, so I drop the deer, like kind of cuss at them cause they don't want to do it. And now I'm walking through the woods and I stumble on like one of these like perfect, perfect, tiny little number one buttons, like a little fat piggy like this, like a real tiny one. And this is the first good mushroom That's we've tasty. seen the whole trip. And uh, so I call my friends. I'm like, hey, I found one. And they're like, sick. You know, like, great. You found a mushroom. And uh, like, well, it's better than the zero you fucking found, mate. Yeah. (laughs) And so I'm like, you guys want to get over here and hunt? I'll send you my GPS coordinates. And they're like, no, we're not. We're not doing that. Like for one mushroom. So they continue to pack up. They get in the cars and they start driving. Five minutes later, I find five more, like within arm's reach of where I found the ones. I call them back right away. And I'm like, hey, I just found five. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll pull over. Let us know if you keep finding them. Five minutes more go by. I've now found like 35. I've got like 10 pounds of mushrooms already, 15 pounds of mushrooms. Dope. So I call them back nice. and I'm like, guys, you should get here. And they're like, okay, shit, where are you? So I send them my GPS points. And now they're racing back because they know I'm going to pick all the mushrooms if they don't get there in time. So they're like flying back as fast as they can. They park totally illegally on the side of the freeway jump over two fences because I had to go like through basically private property to get to the public land where I was. So they jump like over two fences, like trying not to get caught and in trouble and get to where I am right as I pick like basically the last mushroom. And I've got like 50 ish pounds and I'm like, yep, here's another one. And they're yeah. like, dude, fuck you. And I'm like, yeah, I'm best. sure. I'm sure you gave them like five pounds each. Cause generally you tend to share. No, I'm, I'm a sharer. But after I found that, we fanned out, and they found that those two guys found another like twenty pounds each. So it all worked out. But they were just like cussing me and like annoyed that I ran away from the group. And then I was. I mean, to it's make their them fault. Yeah, they of course they were annoyed. No, yeah. Forrest was trying to get them to eat tick deer. I was tick deer sounds <laughs> delicious. Like, yeah. Um, let me ask you something about the mushroom hunting because I saw a cartoon with a storyline where these people were they went looking for mushrooms. It was. Bob's Burgers. And I love Bob's Burgers, by the way. Yeah, it's a great, great show. show. Really and fun. they were uh, they were hunted looking for these mushrooms. It, it was like this whole thing. Deception. You don't want other people finding your mushroom hunting. Sp- and like, oh, yeah. you know, be, like, is that a real thing? 
the reason that I haven't given you more details is because it's so secretive and coveted. I could not say where we were mushrooming. Oh, dude, with like, tru- <laughs> you know, truffle hunting that goes on like in the Blue Mountains and uh, ginseng hunting in some places. Like, it's a real thing. People will, like kill people that are they don't even have like actual claims to the land, but they'll shoot Jesus. people that are fucking oh, there. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's a huge it's fucking combative nuts. thing. Um, and you know, yeah, every, every, it's, it's crazy. It's combative. And where we drove to get to where we were going, we probably saw 150 plus mushroom hunters with their baskets, all cruising around all with like one or two mushrooms, super competitive. Like if you ever posted a spot online, you'd be like ostracized for saying it. It's, it's crazy. I mean, if you think about it too, like the 80 pounds of mushrooms, we pick these number one buttons, these little piggies that I keep picking up each one of these, these are like 30 bucks a pound. So right. I personally wow. did like 60 to 70 pounds this weekend. So, you know, like two grand. Yeah. There's nice. Is that all going into the podcast since we're talking no, about I, it? Of course. I've, I've never, I've never sold a mushroom. I know two the buddies that I go with sell all of theirs, uh, all theirs. Sold mushrooms. Young ones. I've never sold one. I, I love them too much. Got a couple uh broster things. Uh, Matt McHugh wants to know if, uh, if, if you see any of those types of mushrooms that get you high when you're out there. See so, plenty of cybacillin. You want it? You want a little tip? A little tip, yeah, a real creepy tip. one for you. Yeah, nice, yeah, nice creepy little little tip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <you got. laughs> if uh, if you want to find magic mushrooms, you hang out around playgrounds and schools. <laughs> Why is that? So magic mushrooms, psilocybin, still so, psilocybin, psilocybin. Sorry, yeah. um, so, so I don't. You could tell how much I do them. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, they grow in wood chips. And you know how, like, all those, like, schoolyard playgrounds are covered in wood chips? Mm-hmm. Um, that's where you get them. And now here's another fun tip. They're not native to California. So they've been brought here by people intentionally and spread out. And the best place to find them is, like, in San Francisco, like, regional parks and playgrounds. And 99.99% of people don't know what they're looking at. So you can literally wow. see, like, eight children running around, like, a sandbox and playing on a jungle gym. And there's, like five grand worth of magic mushrooms growing in like the community park that's wildlife yeah so this uh wildlife 1607 and i i've heard about this my buddy claimed that he went and did it when he was living in australia isn't there a type of uh psilocybin shroom that grows in cow shit uh there is and that's not the kind that we get in california in fact i was just having this discussion with my buddy so i think that is i'm not sure what what country it is but not in, in California, we do not get that variety, but there are places where you literally just go run around cow fields looking for them growing out of cow patties, and that is psilocybin. Gotcha. Um, I have a question, Forrest. Shoot. What's your take on, what do you, what do you guys think of squirrels? Uh, Huge I fan. like squirrels. I know, I know I you're an you're ongoing issue with them. I mean, I, I'm starting to get a bit of an issue because my neighborhood is overrun. But uh, I just started Googling stuff about squirrels last night, and I came across this episode of This American Life from NPR. Okay. It's the funny, it's one of the funniest stories I've ever heard. So I'm going to give you, it involves a squirrel. I'm going to give you like a 30 second version of this, okay? Please do. So it's a cop, I don't know if he's still a cop, but he's talking about his, it was his first day on the job. As a, as a beat cop, right? So he's just out in the patrol car taking shitty yep. fucking DUI calls, yep. whatever, right? And uh, so they get a, him and his partner get a call and it's for an intruder. And it's a, like the expensive fucking part of town, right? Uh-huh. So they go over and it's all these big old houses, but there's this one house that's just like huge old, but like they, you can tell it's been redone. So they go up. They ring the doorbell. The couple is frenzied and they answer. And it's a very good looking couple. The guy's 50, the woman's 30. And the whole interior has been remodeled stark white. And the woman who he says is beautiful is dressed in head to toe stark white. And he said it just stood out to him, right? Okay. And so they're like, we hear someone is in our attic. (laughs) So they go up there, but because it's an old house, it's one of those like, Christmas vacation style attics where you got to pull the cord and the fucking uh, ladder comes uh, down, right? The ladder comes sliding down. <laughs> yeah. So his buddy's like, I'll go up because he's trying to impress this beautiful woman. Sure. Right. So he goes up the ladder first. He's like, yeah, we're all clear. There's nobody up here. So then the husband goes up and the, the cop whose first aid is goes up. 
And he's like, well, I'm up there for fucking 10 seconds before all of a sudden, just off a box, a squirrel just jumps past my partner's head to which he <laughs> recoils, head butts the homeowner in the nose and breaks, shatters the guy's nose. Right. Uh, yeah. So he's like, oh, my God, this guy's nose is shattered. Now he hears the woman who's down past the hole in the ladder screaming, the squirrel got down here. Right. So now there's a squirrel in the house and you got a homeowner with a broken nose. Right. So he's like, fuck, like we don't really wrangle squirrels, but we broke this guy's nose. Let's wrangle this fucking squirrel up. <laughs> so they go they into this Im his immaculate living room, white leather couches everywhere. Right. And they see the squirrel. And so the two of them start trying to wrangle the squirrel because the homeowner's got a towel over his nose. Right. And the squirrel just is like darting around trying to get away from the two of them and just beelines, boom, runs into the open fireplace. <laughs> incinerates. Oh, no way. Dude, it's a ball of fire now. It <laughs> incinerates and just runs under the couch, right? <laughs> seconds Ooh. later, seconds later, the couch is engulfed in flames. No oh way. Is this God. a real story? Dude, it was on the NPR on This American Life, so I, I sort of believe there was some sort of documentation or fact-checking. <laughs> oh, my God. And the guy sounds so real as he's telling yeah. it. Minutes later, the whole living room's on fire. So the fire <laughs> department shows up. They, the living room is essentially burned to a crisp. Everything's jet black. The white living room. Yeah, yeah, there's a dead squirrel under the couch. And uh, the husband's nose is broken. And he says, it's my first day. My partner just leaves in shame. And I stick my hand out to shake the woman's hand. And she just goes, yeah, thanks. And just slam the door in his face. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't. I can't imagine a worse a fucking show. dude. It's so good. Uh, I feel like we should make a recreation show where we just do that story over and over with different actors. <laughs> we have uh, at the at the new place I live in. I got there's all these trees in the backyard now, which is life changing. By the way, fucking love trees. Never had any out uh, in Reseda, but these squirrels like out there doing some bullshit. These squirrels. Like, I just see a, a, a vision out of the corner of my eye. A squirrel literally jumps to the other. It's like a 10 feet, man. And it just supermans. And then it does it to another tree. And then there's another squirrel. I'm like, I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever... I, this is way more entertaining than any TV. Like, I could <laughs> sit out here. Like, I need to put things that get squirrels to come around. And jump, Dude, hummingbirds, that's butterflies. I need it all. Yeah. That's why I have turtles, dude. You just get a turtle tank. It's way better than TV. I can sit there watching my turtles fight each other and, like, swim around and, like, bop each other on the head. And, like, the turtles are nature's D student. So you put a bunch <laughs> of them in an aquarium and you watch them just swim together. It's phenomenal television. Like, I can sit there and watch my turtle tank for three hours without breaking a stare. No problem. Yes, Garrett <laughs> Hamlin, I am. I was just – I was – I was about to call out that comment. I loved it. <laughs> it's great, and it's true, and it's why. 125. What was the comment? Somebody read it out. Garrett, Garrett Hamlin said Retep is, Retep is fascinated, and he is 100% accurate. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. You're a simple man. Um, I kind of forgot we were doing a What's live. That? I got to look over the comments, how many people we yeah, have. Yeah, we Really? Yeah, like we got a million and from, two in there now. We got a lister from India. We got all the all the regulars are in here. Oh, By the yeah. way, for those of you who don't come to the lives, we should try and do them earlier because I feel like a lot of people on the East Coast are sleeping. It's good yeah. fun. Everyone chats in the stream. We uh, occasionally uh, comment on their funny shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. So absolutely, Matt McHugh, McHugh Broster Matt McHugh got married. At an aquarium. No, no, no. Okay. Bro and Roberts. So sorry, he corrected sorry. me. Bro and Roberts. He proposed at an aquarium in front of the stingray tank and got married okay. this Halloween. But he did clarify that he did actually invite all of us multiple times. Oops. Yeah. Just kidding. Um, Would have gone. Here, so, so here's so love that from Bro and Roberts. Pro level move. I'm gonna change it back to where I was going in my head. Which uh -huh. was that he got married at an aquarium. I'm yeah. going to throw this to you guys and to the Brosners as we're listening live. You can get married at any venue like that. Zoo, aquarium, theme park, Walmart. I don't care. You come up with a DMV. Something outrageous. Where are you getting married? Oh, 
Okay, that's a great question. I have always had a fantasy to um, be in like a Walmart type store after dark. Okay. And <laughs> like after it's closed and play, uh, have like a paintball fight. Oh my God. Could you imagine? You're just wrecking shop. There's aisles. Dude, like you're, you're running hiding. Down the aisles, climbing up those things, like in a Walmart super center where they're like 30. Yeah. Feet your sniper points? Oh my God. Dude, remember, remember, remember the old metal cages where oh, they yeah. had the with bouncy the- balls in them? Oh, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. standing in that. Nobody can see you with your fucking dude, paintball. Dude, that's a – so, okay. So, a uh, paintball-themed wedding in a closed Walmart in, in the middle of the night. That's my answer. That's unreal. Like, if you could, <laughs> if you gave zero fucks about anybody's actual thoughts about you, right. like, that's the wedding I'm doing. I'm doing a paintball-themed wedding in a Walmart. Yep. That's, that's mine. Amazing. Ritep, what's yours? Bes- and it can't be a Taco Bell, please. <laughs> Fuck off. It can be whatever I want. You just there is said that it. Taco Bell themed resort in Palm Springs. I don't know if there's that's a, yeah, there's right. a, there's a Taco Bell. Uh, I just saw it. The Taco Bell posted okay. it on their Instagram where somebody got married there and like rented it out and had the reception there. Um, what would be yours? Again, yeah. honestly, I am such a curmudgeon. I would like to do it just in this office right here. Maybe I'll get a <sighs> tank full of turtles. Ugh, bro. You, yeah. you, Okay. Uh, real quick, so hang on yeah. for us. Someone named Phantomverse has has posted this question a few times, and I I like he she they's tenaciousness. I don't know what this is. For us, do you think the Schomburg deer exists? Do you know what this is? Uh, I believe it. I have to look it up. I've heard the name very many times. It's a Vietnamese deer. I'm pretty sure. Um, Thailand. Pat not was Vietnam. late to his wedding. Um, Jacob Gifford true do i believe that it still exists it's so the schomburg deer it's not the one i was thinking of it it, it is a large deer species from the thailand area and it was large okay. enough to have been like it's it's like a north american elk do i think it exists absolutely not um okay. any longer because you can't really hide an elk in a country like thailand you know what i mean it's just it's so populated there's so much hunting pressure um it's just it would be practically impossible in my opinion for an undulate of that size now what's funny is you go next door right you go to vietnam uh and laos and you've got the anamite mountain range and there are things like the sala can hide so you know i think it all just sort of comes down to weighing in those factors but yeah in my opinion the schrumberg's deer no way okay so is it a mythical creature or is it something that went extinct no it's something that went extinct it was a known large antler deer um yeah gotcha recep dean hall just offered you 250 for the broccoli painting jacob Dude. gifford is no joke three hundo thoughts yeah i mean i i've gotten offers for up to six seven grand you're gonna have to do no you haven't <laughs> um... i told you it means too much to me to get rid of, it. and it's it's a tree, okay? So second of all, no, because fuck no, you, it's, it's not it's broccoli, broccoli, sir. It's broccoli. It we got good. we got five broccoli. One. How about just one Bitcoin? That's the answer. One Bitcoin. Yeah, so I'll take yeah. that. So I I just did a thing, right? And this is everybody knows that this is a financial show. Um, uh, of I course just, it is. Yeah. yeah. I just did a thing on one of my trading apps where I'm going to put $10 a month into Bitcoin. That's it. Just once a month, throws 10 bucks in there. Which app yeah, are you, you on? Should. Which which app do you use? Uh, I'm doing that in... Is it Voyager? No, in Coinbase. Okay. Yeah. Coinbase. I like, I like Voyager. I'm, I'm Pat. not Voyager. By the way, I also, know how money, I also know how much money you make. I think you could put 10, 10 bucks a day in, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you put 70 bucks a week in if you're trying to... Strike it rich. Because I know you were at Mitch's wedding. I'm sure he was talking about how he probably paid for the whole wedding on fucking one of those weird altcoins. Oh, it's Mitch. So, yes, he did all, yeah. you know, he's, he, he's, got, he's got doge paintings up on the wedding wall. For, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I like that. I like that. What else is going on? You guys got news? You got some stories? I, I, I got something I got to bring up. Yeah. So when the, when the movie Blackfish came out, there was a lot of blowback against SeaWorld. And yeah. I was under the impression because they made an announcement that they were going to stop doing orca shows, right? right? And they weren't going to have any more orca breeding and they were going to, 
Christina's friend posted a picture. She was at SeaWorld with her kid. There was clearly an orca show going on in the background, right? So I was like, what the fuck is this? So I Googled it. I didn't realize that when they made the big announcement saying, we're going to stop orca shows, they sort of slipped in that it was temporary. Oh, interesting. So now they're doing orca shows, but they've rebranded them as educational as opposed to, you know, them dancing and doing whatever the fuck, but they're still orca shows. And so I I said, Hey, let's connect with your friend. I want to talk to her about what happened. So she said that she went to the thing. There was two orcas doing the show and then two orcas that weren't part of the show that were literally just like panickedly swimming in circles in their enclosures. Yeah. Jesus. And so I was like, it's so fucking weird how, Companies can just be such fucking liars and so two faced to just be like, we're, we're good. We're done. No, we're not going to yeah. do it. And then they're like, oh, no one's talking about blackfish. People are talking about Trump and Biden and right. fucking AOC. Right. Let's right. fucking start the shows again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy to me. Like just the way that you can just lie to people and you're like, no, no, that was temporary. We're back on it. Uh, unpopular opinion. And I, I, I'm going to come into this neutrally and see what people think. First of all, I want to be very clear about this. I don't support any super intelligent animal being in captivity. I have no problem with snakes in captivity, rabbits in captivity, even Rat- certain cats. No problem. Huh? Ratap in captivity, you'd be okay with that? Just a simple yeah, man? Yeah, that's not an intelligent being. Um, <laughs> so, if, if, so let's take SeaWorld. Let's take orcas, right? Those orcas that are in that tank, they're miserable. No question about it. They're miserable. Yeah. But if you knew, and this is the hypothetical versus the reality, if you knew that those miserable orcas in that tank inspired a hundred kids a year to love orcas and become marine biologists and fight to save orcas, would it not be worth it to have those orcas in that tank? Pat. Oh, I was just letting the Brosners marinate. It's a... a Um, and the thing is, we don't know that that actually happened, right? right. And in today's world, there's media and so on and so forth. But I think that people get so emotionally invested that they don't forget that there's actual some merit of having an emotional connection to these animals when you're a kid that can sometimes inspire people. See, and that's that's, the point I that's my sort of the reason that I'm pro zoo, just and it's purely anecdotal, just based on me, right? Like going to the zoo was something right. I enjoyed. It really made me interested in it, and right. I went on to make you know a hundred hours of wildlife based programming, but I, so I'm pro zoo in that sense, but I guess I'm just thinking purely anecdotally based on my interpretation of truthfully, the movie blackfish was the first time I ever thought about this issue, Right. you know? And so if that movie never come out, I probably would have never thought about it, but But, I don't know something about the orcas and their intelligence and just how much I, I like care. the animal and yeah, I don't know. And, and I but agree I, with you, by the way, because I, sorry, Tap, I'll let you say, say what you want to say. Say, I agree with you. It's just like, there are millions of kids, millions that will go to SeaWorld and get to see an orca that will never get to see one in the wild. Right. And that's fine. True, like I actually don't care that they'll never get to see one in the wild, like as a personal motive. But if, 10 of those, let's say, inner city kids, and I'm just using that term as generally because those are the kids that can't see them in the wild, right? 10 of those inner city kids have this connection with this orca and they have an emotional reaction to it by seeing it, whether it's through the glass or jump through the hoop or whatever. And you know that that orca is fucking miserable, right? But those kids grow up to become the next Jane Goodalls of orcas or one of them does. Is it not worth those two orcas being miserable for the good of the species? Where on the flip side of that coin... They, they look at it on TV and it's like, yeah, I can look at orcas or I can look at Avatar. I don't know which one, you know, they don't mean they're the same to me. Avatar is just as good as or- as planet Earth, right? They both look great. Uh, right. And it doesn't actually invoke that emotional response. And I think that's a controversial thing that a lot of people never are willing to talk about because it's really fucking sad to see orcas in, a, in an aquarium. Of course, yeah. So, hey, uh, when, I was, when I was talking to Christina about it, she asked this and then Logan Tress just asked this in the chat. And I actually don't know the answer. Knowing that orcas are very intelligent, would it be possible to release them and they would learn the survival skills and jump right back into being a wild animal or, or no? Absolutely. Yeah, no. They, and they've done that, by the way, okay. um, in the movie Free Willy. Um, but uh, <laughs> you know, they have done that and it, it has been successful. But yeah. what looks difficult is that os- orcas speak a bunch of different languages and they have very complex um, social dynamics. 
It's a great book by a woman named Alexandra Mortensen called Listening to Whales. She goes really deep into the different kinds of orcas, different species, different social dynamics, different languages, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's what's difficult. So if you just took a couple orcas that you caught, you know, in the Mediterranean and dumped them in the Pacific Ocean, there'd be like all kinds of problems. It would be like taking you and I and dumping us in like rural China, right? And it's like, right. you know, right, right, right. You, can't, you can't communicate a word with those people. Like you don't know where to go or what to do or, you know what I mean? And, you know, we live in the first world, so you'd figure it out. But for an orca, it's like, where the fuck am I? What do I do? I can't speak the language. Like I, I you know, I can't fit in. Like it'd be completely different. Forrest, Connor Peterson said that he accidentally once dropped a plastic toy in the orca tank. Um, <laughs> do you think he killed a whale? No, I don't. I okay, you're they, fine. You're fine, Connor. Um, do, yeah. <laughs> dude, I love these lives because our Brosners do so much research on wildlife stories and things in this realm. And all you have to do is just read the chat. So this yeah. is fantastic. And I apologize right. for most likely mispronouncing your name, sir, or ma'am, or whatever. But... Dhruv Sadafal brought yeah. to my attention that uh, Vice just put out a long form uh, doc about Neil Waters and his thylacine video in 2021. No way. They did. No, they did. They did, apparently. And a couple people commented that they had seen it. Um, how did we not get a hold of this? And how are we not in it for being the ones that called him out first? I don't, I, I'm sure we're not. But so I asked uh, what they what they talked about. And he said, it talks about his motivation behind what he does and how all he's trying to do is start a debate and get people's attention towards the idea of the animal still being out there. So it sounds like it was very sympathetic towards his, his situation. Yeah. Because he wouldn't Oof. do it any other way, dude. I mean, he would, that guy would never allow, like allow him. Who's this, to be, who's this reporter who decided to do a puff piece on Neil Waters yeah, with a positive really message? Questionable. Yeah. That's well, I mean, but at the end, if you're bringing up controversial shit, I obviously dislike that man uh, with every fight. Oh, oh, really? Team. We couldn't tell by the fact but, that you and him had <laughs> But, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. so what do you think about that, Forrest? I mean, if if it is bringing attention to this, even though this guy's doing it in like this deceptive kind of sh I mean, it's it's almost a similar point making about the orcas. Not the exact point, but similar. What do you... What do you think? It, there is similarities. Don't you remember? That was my whole thing in the beginning. Well, like once we first debunked it, I was like, well, yeah. like, you know, people yeah. talk. You did. You, were, nice. you were really nice about it. Yes. And, and I did. Now I kind of stand him. But back then I genuinely kind of felt like that. I was like, all right, he's kind of an idiot. But, you know, at least he's got people talking about it. You know, now I, I, I feel much more like he's just doing it for attention and blah, blah, blah. But. The flip the upside of that is people are talking about it. You know, sure. Vice put out a piece on it. I'm sure a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand. Well, how many people watch Vice? Twelve. Twelve people yeah, exactly. now know what a thylacine is that they did that didn't know what a thylacine was before. So you know, that's that's kind of good. It's the hundred and thirteen Brosners on this live, and then sixty other people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> by the way, Edwin J said he already sent it to you, Forrest. Uh, oh, shit. And then Raman Tarani said it's literally just forty minutes of him talking shit about the wild times. That'd be great <laughs> I believe it. publicity I believe it. for yeah. us. Oh my God, that'd be great. But by that'd the be way, great. like, I mean, it, the whole, both of those issues speak to the bigger issue of how fucked up it is in society today, how you can't, like, there's, it's very difficult to get a message out there. Thing being absurd whether it's good or bad or negative like n there's so much noise about everything that getting your fucking message across is is this is how people do it i mean whether it's like talking about like neil waters he's he's putting out fake pictures of the thylacine and that's his method of doing it and like for for people to see the orcas and have and be able to get that experience of potentially becoming you know, the next person who, you know, helps the orcas out down the line. The only way they see that is by this nefarious method where these orcas have to suffer. You know, it's like, why, you know, that's the, the most fucked up part of society these days. Or, I mean, I guess, has it always been that way? There's just a message across other so than I doing shit like this. You're completely right. I mean, go and read the Daily Mail. Right, just scroll the Daily Mail's headline thing. There's not one yeah. thing that isn't the most shocking thing you've ever read 
Um, yeah. <laughs> but Peter, you, reminded me, you had something you wanted to say about the orcas, and then I just kind of kept blabbing away. What? Uh, no, what no, I, I was, I was just saying. <laughs> No, no, it's nothing. I was, I was just be devil's advocate, but you kind of are explained it away in your next point. So it was moot after that. Um, fair Pat, enough. what are you cackling yes. about? So uh, Donald Jones just said, and I just found out about this about an hour before the podcast and my buddy's the EP of it. I knew it was coming. I just didn't know it was out. Tiger King season two. What? Yep. Like, yeah. What a mess. What? What? Like he's in jail. Yeah. There's nothing to talk about. Carol Baskins has a show on Animal Planet. Like, what, what did you know that by the way, Patrick? I did not. Yeah. I knew, I know she was on Dancing with the Stars and got bounced first, and I watched her dance and I could smell how bad she smelled like old lady through the TV screen. <laughs> like she, I could I was like she stinks. She fucking stinks, I can tell. She I know it when old, I see it. Old perfume smell, like boiled candies. And Ew, candy. mothballs and yeah, old couch. Oh, she's boy. she's king guys because they used her footage in the season two. And she's like, yeah. nope, not having that. Yeah, her lawyers sent a thing to Netflix as well, uh, demanding that they uh, remove any content that, that came from her. Um, so it'll be interesting. When does it come out? Do you know? Uh, I don't know when it comes gotcha. out, but somebody just mentioned it. Maybe it was this week, but I just, I, I got to know what they're making the show about. Uh, a couple of people have asked what everyone's drinking tonight. Recep, what in the fuck is that? Dude, I have just a variety of things in the fridge now. Thanks to my friends. This is a Bud Light seltzer. Watermelon. Oh, is that? It looks, it looks fruitacious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Forrest. Forrest, you're dressed up like a guy who hid in the woods after bombing the Olympic Park in Atlanta. What are you drinking? Uh, I got a, I got a delightful, a delightful red vino, like yourself. Yeah, which baby. Is starting to get a little low, but it is, it is a treat because we made mushrooms tonight. Ob had a nice yeah. meal, roasted some lamb, ate some mushrooms. Ooh, some that sounds wine. good. Nah, it's a good night. It's a good night. I do wish I'd brought my microphone for you guys and my headphones so I didn't sound like a robot, but here we are. Here's a little behind the scenes of the wild times and all things related to Forrest. <laughs> if you look, if you plan any trip with Forrest, uh, uh -oh. he will have everything prepared and ready, plus like 17 things as it relates to fun shit for him, right? Mm -hmm. He'll bring his snake hook. He'll bring a backup snake hook. He'll bring the stuff to make a third snake hook. That's you know, he'll have like weird rations for everyone. He'll yeah. have his paracord. Yep. Yeah. If you ask him to bring his microphone to a trip, he'll be like, bro, I never forget anything. And then two days later when you're like, so you got your mic? He's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you're like 20 for 20 with forgetting your mic. Yeah, it's pretty He's, bad. He just did it that. It's like, yeah, I, I know. My mic. Um, dude, somebody <laughs> yeah. said, uh, Dominic Martinez says Forrest looks like the guy that said he was drafted to fight in Vietnam, but never, went. that's amazing. It's that's unbelievably so true. <laughs> the rest of it. it looks like he was drafted, but what? Say he was drafted to fight in Vietnam, but never went. No, but I tell everybody that I serve time, you know, that's yeah. important. It's called, know. it's called stolen valor, son. You go to prison for that shit. Hey, do you I look like the kind of guy that didn't serve? Very much so. Your skin yeah. is impeccable. <laughs> yeah. uh, he literally went up, to wall and hunted mushrooms. About 10 of the Brosners have asked you to, to shotgun something, Peter. Do it. No, Peter, no. you have a whole bunch of cans. You just showed it off. Come on. Let's go. It's alive. Fix yourselves while I get a freshie. <laughs> Uh, you guys peer pressured him without trying that hard. Nice job. <laughs> nice oh, job. Good. How excited are the Brosners going to be right now that they're getting a, a live Retep shotgunning? Uh, if he doesn't do it correctly this time, I'm going to be pretty upset. Because he fucked it up twice last time. It was unbelievable. I'm still not sure that he knows how to do it. No, he has no, God, he has no. no clue. And we can't tell him. We just have to see what he comes up with. What's the silliest thing that happened at Mitch's wedding? Who embarrassed themselves the most thoroughly? Uh, Thomas Backer was there, by the way. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah, they've known yeah. each other for a long time. Yeah. 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 No, he was he was in great form. Um, nice. The most, the most embarrassing thing that happened at the wedding was the maid of honor dropped some pretty rough, uh, and I'm not gonna say who it was. Some pretty rough, okay. like uh, 
you know, jabs that were that just fell on Ooh. sort of gasps as opposed Ooh. to giggles. You know what I mean? Ooh. You know exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. That so, is that is so uncomfortable. It's it's awful. <laughs> you're you're kind of sitting there and you look because you, you they make the joke and you look down from the speech mm. so that you're not making eye contact and you look and everybody else is doing the same. Oh man! Nobody's willing to look at the person speaking at that moment in time, which is uh, it's mighty unfortunate because and, and there were the kind of jabs that were like, oh, you know, Ashley smelled really bad. The end, and where you're like. <laughs> uh, okay like that's yeah. that's not funny or nice or flattering like none but, of that was was adorable um, i was i went to a wedding i went all the way to spain to go to a wedding my buddy's uh, wedding i was so pissed because i had no fucking money at the time i was like you gotta get fucking married in spain just do it in new york <laughs> and uh and his dad decided to stand up at the wedding unplanned speech oh, hammered wow. and at this point him and his fiance slash wife we're planning yeah. on opening a sandwich shop in New York City. They were going to open like yeah. these like little Spanish sandwiches. And the dad stands up and he's like, well, I paid for Matt to go to college and grad school. He's thinking of opening a sandwich shop. <laughs> Hopefully he'll move out of my basement sometime soon. And we're just like, everyone's like, I think this is just like a scathing yeah, fucking right. rant you about like, his son. It was like, so what bad. Does this turn into the loving wedding stuff. Like, <laughs> or joke. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Uh, Recep, are you ready? People are, like, very excited for this, I can tell. He left. Oh, he's oh, turning his there. terrible lighting on. See oh, yeah, Recep, look- Recep, you are looking skinnier. I can tell in your arms. They're not as fat. <laughs> Here he goes. Yeah. That a boy. That's something. All right. Let's Here see we go. I still don't think he knows how to do it. No. Nope. Okay, good start, good start. I sprained my fucking face. Always do. Down, go down a little bit. Lower, 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 we can't lower, see you. Lower. Yeah, he's doing it. Is it, I think he's shotgunning a, a Bud Light. <laughs> he did it. Brand new house, he just drops it. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir, well done. Yes, look at you go. He's... Dude, he's smelt. Look at him. Yeah, he's, oh. he's lost a solid 25. Look like I have lipstick on and what's going on? Here? What? Is he, did you cut your lip? Are your lips bleeding? He, he, he cut his lip. He oh cut his God. lip. Oh, he's God. he's bleeding. Everybody, Rutep sliced his lip oh, open. Yeah. Trash uh, well can, done, sir. Can well you done. taste the blood, Peter? Are you bleeding? Yeah, it's delicious. Tastes like iron. <laughs> iron. See, I right. remembered because I had it burned into my brain time you guys just yelling at me the proper instructions i've never seen so many people offended as when you tried to shotgun that last drink 20 30 40 episodes ago i know we lost at least 50 percent of our fan base i'm sure i mean i i i was pretty close to not coming back well Ritep, <laughs> thank you for doing that i'm sure that felt great uh McHugh is calling you the people's hero uh ryan Har- Tan man Ryan Hardy is inviting you to come to one of his frat parties to practice. The the people oh, are just boy. loving you. This this is why you're everyone's favorite. Okay. Oh, hey. Thank you. I know I know we've talked about, you know, going on like a, a wild times trip, joining a shoot, whatever. How fun would a night in a frat be though? Right? I mean what wild it- times frat party? Forrest, you're, Especially you're with like, the tan man. Yeah, you're like ten. <laughs> <laughs> you're like ten years younger than me. That sounds appalling to me. I'd prefer to. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. not. First of all, and secondly, I think it would be hilarious. I'd make it. I, I don't. You know, I don't believe. I don't believe that they have more stamina than we do. They're rookies. They're amateurs. They've been doing it for a year or two tops. Patrick has a glass of wine every night. He's a professional. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't trust the youth. I'll tell you. I was in a frat. You were in a frat, even though you never paid dues for us. I don't trust these kids. Look, 94% of them are going to be great. They're going to be, it's going to be high fives, jokes. We're going to have a great time. They're not going to care who we are. We're not going to care. We're just going to have fun, right? It's the other 6% that concerns me. Okay. There's a, there's always the kid who drinks too much and is like, who are these guys? They visit, they're yeah. visiting from Penn State. Who? Where are you from? 
<laughs> right? And that 6%, I used to know how to deal with when I was 20. Yeah. Right. Not at 40, boy. No. What would you even I'm, say to them? You're like, uh, I'm a I'm a dad. <laughs> I would just be like, I'm a bit peckish. I'm going to retire to the kitchen. And then I would run out the back door and go get a cab. <laughs> I don't know what to do with these kids. They're terrifying. We've discussed many a time how even just going to a, a party where you don't know people, it's th that's what I want to do just there. It doesn't matter if it's a frat party. I'm like, what am I, me yeah. making friends at this age? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's so true. Recept, remember we we go to our friend Paul's Christmas party every year, and yeah. every year it ends exact, starts and ends exactly the same. Go it's on. me, Recep, Neil, Paul, who's hosting, his yeah. buddy, who's a famous actor that's hilarious. It's the five of us standing in the back house drinking alone for four hours while two hundred yeah. other people just party, party in the yard. Because we're like, you, yeah. it's us five. Let's just do the same thing we do every year. And then you got to like when you got to go to the to the horse divorce to get a yeah. drink. You're like, oh hey, like you got to like feign conversation just to like get by yeah. so you can grab your goddamn olives or whatever. <laughs> Did you say horse divorce table? <laughs> yeah, horse divorce. <laughs> oh wow let's Horace, see you, well, have you got to an age and I was, I was explaining this to jessica recently where you're like not open to more friends i'm like i'm yeah. maxed out on friends like i don't have the space i don't have the time in my calendar retep's just gone pitch black oh he's back That's um, and, and, and i'm just like so basically what happened was jessica had some friends over and she, it was, you know, the scenario. She's like, you're going to love the husband. He's great. Like he's, you and him are going to get along yeah. great. Like yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, great. Just <laughs> literally shoot me now. Like I'll, I'll take COVID and go to the hospital over, sit through this dinner. Um, <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he, you know, he comes by and he's super friendly and he's trying to be nice. We've got nothing in common, nothing to talk about, you know? And he's like, you know, he's, he's, and, I'm, and I leave and I'm trying to explain to Jess. I'm like, listen, he was great. Super nice guy. Yeah, nothing wrong with him. Nothing wrong with him. Right. Not, not accepting applications for new friends currently. Like, just don't have the bandwidth for it. Not not interested. I've had the, I have the same friends that I've had for the last ten years. They're all they're all perfectly acceptable people as well. Like he, yeah. I'm sure he's just as nice as any of them. I just don't have the bandwidth for more. Like, can't do it. Sorry. Well, the old and Forrest, you and I have this in common. We have a lot of responsibilities. Whereas Retep yeah. is free wheeling, right? Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm freewheeling. Yeah. I, I, I've I've almost had a nervous breakdown about 20 times over the past year. <laughs> Free but, yeah, once you hit our age, it's like it's a struggle just to find time for the friends that you already love. That's it. Yep. Um, yeah. But every once in a while, like once every maybe 18 months, I meet someone where I'm like, ooh, I desperately want to be their friend. I'll drop everything. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's true. You, like there is always like once in a while where you still get, you know, a little dopamine hit, like a, like a connection with somebody when you start talking. Yeah. But the, the problem is, is like, if you're, that's ever like, that's everybody, but what you got to do it when you're, because you, you know, you're making plans to go on trip, like on vacation with people when you're drunk. Yeah, yeah. we should do this. Yeah, should go oh, Argentina next year. Of course, yeah. man. I can't tell you the last time. I don't even know I, your last name. I'm not going to Argentina with you. Right. I can't tell you the last time I got properly drunk with someone and was it didn't end the night being like, I can't believe we're like finally doing horseback Patagonia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the morning and you're like, what was that guy's name? Yeah. Todd? <laughs> I can't be yeah. friends with the Todd. Yeah. Robert, Robert. Yeah, you're over there. You're oh, over it's there. going for us. Sorry. Christina, we're going to Patagonia. She's like, yeah, for She's sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have a valid passport, but yeah, 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 we're, we're going. Uh, Robert Roberts says, I'm 37. The last frat party I went to was just a couple years ago. I just ended up cooking for everyone all night in the kitchen, which That's is hilarious. I could see that happening. Uh, and then Matt so you're McHugh. You're out checking in on everybody. You're like, hey, young man, you've had a lot to drink. Um, why don't you, why don't yeah. you grab a piece of toast? Yeah. Hey, yeah, can I get you a quesadilla real quick? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anything Matt to McHugh. actually conversing with people. Dude, McHugh just dropped something that is so true to my life. He says, it's just like those airport bar friends. You drink for a few hours and then you never see him again. But I, I have left airport. I've exchanged phone numbers with men and women. <laughs> Probably 25 to 30 times at airport bars where I'm like, when yeah. we get there, 
obviously we're not going to share a cab, but like we'll hang out. Right. 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 <laughs> uh, or they're going somewhere else and you're like, yeah, let's connect up in like Chicago. It's halfway. Never happens. What's your theory on this? What's your theory on why airport bars breed such camaraderie? Wait, wait, let me go here because I, I've wait. thought about this many times, dude. Interesting. First of all, it's a, it's a whole nother world. Like, let's say you get to the airport at eight. First of all, you're drinking immediately. You get there, you have, you're by yourself. I mean, when you're by yourself, this is when it really takes effect. This camaraderie. Of course. You don't yeah, talk to like, people who are with other people. You talk to no, other losers. Yeah. 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 Like, you're like losers. watching exactly. fucking soccer or whatever's on the TV all yeah. into it. And, yeah, and then like, you just, you know, there's this, you're like, it's like you're already on vacation. And then I think in the back of your head, you know that you're never going to talk to this person again. So you start revealing like your deepest, darkest secrets. And it's just like, you. Uh, it's like therapy. Yeah. I think there's a one other layer to it, if I could step Go. in. Go. People are saying it's the temptation island effect, all this stuff. But yeah, it's typically when I'm by myself is when I strike up conversations with other people because otherwise I'd be talking to you guys, right? right? It's other people who are by themselves. Right. You're drinking. Of course, that's helpful. But I think there's a layer here, which is that people who have zero, zero either subconscious, unconscious, or conscious fear of flying are yeah. probably more likely to just go to the – get there late go right onto the plane, rush to the plane, quickly get to the gate, you know, right? People yep. who are, have fear of flying are more likely to go a bit early and start drinking because it numbs all the feelings, right? Yep. <laughs> so you have two people drinking who are in a very vulnerable position that somewhere in their mind they're thinking, this may be the last hour I have. <laughs> I'm going to just live, laugh, love or whatever the fucking thing is, right? Yeah, and I'm going to just do it and I'm going to be wonderful to everyone and I'm going to yeah. accept love. And then you, you, you go for an hour with someone and you go, I love this person deeply. <laughs> That's hilarious. Because you I might die soon. That. Yeah. I wonder how many uh, relationships, like long-term marriages and stuff, started at an airport bar. You think it's a lot? I, I bet more 10, than yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, man. I, I remember in like early college, even old college days, when you were flying by yourself, you'd sit there getting ready to get on the plane and you're just looking, are there any cute girls getting on this plane? And you're like, okay, there's one. Oh man, am I going to get seated next to her? Is this going to happen? Never, ever, ever has it happened. You're always sitting next to the 340 per pound for person from Topeka, Kansas, who's sweating in your lap. But uh, I just God, remember yeah. getting there and looking around and being like, all right, there's three cute girls. Odds are good. I get that. Never, ever. I, you never even see them get on the plane. You're like, oh, there they go. No. I mean, it's it's it, the odds of that happening are like one in 300 because that's how many people are on the plane. Yep. That's yeah. how that goes. Man. Um, um, our, buddy, our buddy from Uruguay. Uh, Uruguay. Uruguay. Oh, he is dying frankly that to yeah. to hear your thoughts and our thoughts on the uh the condors out here in California that gave birth without fucking yeah it's um it's big big news in the wildlife world have you heard about this patrick not at all this sounds oh, I, shit. I i didn't know this could happen in birds i'd never heard of this um it's very very unexpected and especially because so First of all, California condors very nearly went extinct. A bunch of zoos brought them back. Yeah. You know, Santa Barbara Zoo, where I'm from in particular, was instrumental in that. And they were always, you know, mating them, reproducing them, so on and so forth. And then I haven't even actually read the whole thing yet. But basically, they figured out, uh, where, was it the San Diego Zoo, Peter? Did you read it? I'm sure it's one of the brochures will weigh in. One of these zoos, there was asexual reproduction where they uh, a female condor laid fertile eggs and hatched chicks. And it's just like absolutely wild that, uh, you know, these unfertilized eggs have, re have resulted in asexual reproduction, parthenogenesis as it's known, um, you know, for these animals to, to come out perfectly healthy. So wait, so what do they think happened? Nuts. That the sperm stayed inside the body or that wh – what the fuck happened? Well, so parthenogenesis is basically a cloning mechanism where you uh, and this is most well known, well most well documented lizard species where the body is basically like it has both sets of 
I don't really understand it that well, to be honest. I'm not a geneticist, but sure. basically the body decides to develop an embryo and can fertilize that embryo. You know, the egg and sperm can come together and create a clone without actual reproduction taking place. And then the animal that is born is pretty much a clone of its parent because it doesn't have any DNA coming in from outside sources. Yeah. Um, so yeah, wow. that's, that's what parthenogenesis is in a nutshell, very poorly explained. And um, that's, yeah, it's just revolutionary that this has happened in these condors. Insane. Yeah. Do, now is, I don't know if you, I know you don't know every single thing, but do you know if it's, if this is something that they've witnessed in bird species before? I don't know about it, um, to be honest, in other birds. I mean, it's, it's very well documented in reptiles and amphibians, and that's obviously sort of my specialty. Um, I've never heard of it in mammals, and I've personally never heard of it in any birds or birds of prey in particular um, before, period. So, yeah, it's pretty incredible. Wow, dude. It's, it blows my mind because normally <clears throat> have regular sexual functioning to reproduce. That's actually uh sorry say that again normally they, they, need... they normally yeah yeah they normally like fuck other yes, animals yes condors absolutely mate 100 percent. yeah and so it's like you know what <laughs> what if this just started happening with humans could it uh mm, i don't know the answer to that no i don't just think say so. yes <laughs> yes yeah no but i mean like it's crazy that fucking so how does this happen in like and amphibians and reptiles and snakes since uh so parthenogenesis is a system that typically happens when mates are not available so in teed lizards which is the ones that i sort of did a little bit of studying on that are parthenogenic what would happen was after x number of seasons where they weren't encountering a viable mate they would then clone themselves and reproduce parthenogenically um, and so it was like, it was almost like a choice. It was like an evolutionary uh, need to reproduce and continue the species when, even when there weren't viable mates available. So it's, a, yeah, yep. so it's basically like they evolved to do that, to, to, to continue yeah, reproducing. Absolutely. But the fact, and, and to be honest, I really should read this condor thing. I've been traveling for the last week and a bit, so I haven't had a chance to. Collecting but, um, thousands of pounds of mushrooms. We know that too, but yeah, I've just been running around, but I really want to actually read the specifics of what happened. And I, I'm sure it's going to be very vague. It's like all of a sudden a condor laid some eggs and some, you know, it never made it before, but where did it happen? Why did it happen? What are the conditions? I am very curious about it and I just don't know, but I mean, it's incredible and it's incredible for a variety of reasons. The main one being California condor needs every edge it can get. Like there's yeah. not many of them. And if, you know, if it, it, it it's almost like a biological mechanism is triggered by the fact that their population is so low that they're just like all right let's make more we don't need mates anymore it's easy Isn't that cool hey so i like this question it's a good one from shark Ive. like archive yeah. but shark Ive. just wants to know nice. what everyone's favorite favorite types of sharks are i've actually never asked you this for us even though i've spent many many hours on a shark boat with you many. what is your favorite uh favorite type of shark man um, probably a wobby gong. I've never seen one in the wild. Do you know what that is? Either no. of you guys? No, no. Peter, are you able to pull stuff up, or is that too difficult? Yeah, let me see here. W wobby gong. Yeah, W O B B E G O N G. Wobby gong shark. Oh, I've seen I've seen this in an aquarium. It's a carpet shark, right? It's a type of carpet shark. Uh, it's a type of carpet shark. Yeah. I think they have one at the Monterey Aquarium. I'm pretty sure. Oh, interesting. So there's one called a frilled oh, wobby gong. Cool that I've never seen in the wild that I think is just an absolutely fascinating creature. I'd love, I, I think that's, that's gotta be it. That or just a sawfish. Cause a shark with a, you know, machines uh, like a uh, chainsaw on it. They face. are fucking yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, my, my pick my head because it's fucking just insane looking. I'm just, it's a common shark, but it's like a fucking hammerhead. And it, you, to pin down its its prey and eat it and capture it and shit, man. It's pretty nuts. I mean, much, yeah. I, I would say anyone who says anything except the goblin shark is a buffoon <laughs> because <laughs> there's just nothing cooler looking or more just prehistoric, weird Star yeah. Wars creature than a fucking goblin shark. Yeah, oh, yeah. 
they're not big. They're not scary, right? Like they're no. well, they're super deep water, I believe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're so bizarre. crazy looking. A, a Can you get, you guys bar. see this? I pulled it up. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 So okay, I don't know cool. if, if you guys know this or not. I, I think Patrick, you probably do, but Peter, goblin sharks have what's called an accordion jaw. So um, I don't see any images of it. Dave Ebert, the guy I worked with in South Africa, actually caught the first ever video of it happening uh, with the team he was working on. But they can shoot out their jaw like, you know, like an accordion, grab stuff and pull it back in. Um, Dude, you, know, you, you kind of see it in that. Yeah, exactly. That that photo. Um, yeah. The rest of the time, the jaw is tucked in. But, you know, what an insane like biological mechanism to send out like both yeah. parts of your jaw, grab something and pull them back in. So, I mean, this is clearly where they got the uh, the visual for Alien from, right? From this thing? From the goblin shark? <laughs> yeah. Forrest, do you know what a viper dogfish is? That fish? No, I don't. Peter, I mean, I what, know what a dogfish is, the type of shark, but I don't know what a viper dogfish is. You got to look up a viper dogfish here, Peter. It's absolutely yeah. fucking crazy. Uh, shark I've actually was like, oh, if you like... Uh, these oh, are yeah. fucking cool, though, dude. I've never oh, seen, I've this seen thing. these before. Yeah, I've seen. Oh, I've never seen one. I've seen images of them before. Um, yeah, they're they're bizarre, dude. Like when dog. when Bradley Trevor Grieve he told me for the first time about uh, the cookie. cookie the cookie cutter. Yeah, I think stuff. Forrest, you and I talked about it because he was trying to figure out how to do a shark special with the globe and yeah, you yeah. Had, I remember that. Yeah. Um, they were trying to do a whole thing to, to actually film cookie cutter sharks, mm -hmm. but good God. I mean, when you see pictures of the bites that cookie cutter sharks have taken out of people oh yeah, and I don't want to be Why? mean about any animal cause you know, they all have their rights to be here, mm -hmm. but what a prick. I mean, God, they're <laughs> pricks. Like well, wild uh, said that it's his favorite, uh, shark species, which is interesting cause it's not, not something that gets a lot of exposure, but yeah, look at that mouth. And, uh, oh, yeah, but just the idea that you're just, you're floating on your back. It's day three of the vacation. Yep. You decided to go for 10 days instead of seven. You know what I mean? And you're floating <laughs> on your back. And the next thing you know, a cookie cutter shark just bombs up from the depths and catches you. Did, you know, uh, Peter, scroll down a little. There's a picture yeah. of the guy in Hawaii who got tagged. He's this smiley guy there. Just click that. Click, click smiley and look at his leg over there or, oh, belly or whatever it is. Gross. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. We love to see it, Pat, when you get grossed out. Dude, they chose, this is what they came up with that character from the movie Hellraiser from. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, they're getting all of their horror movie characters from sharks. Man. Did you ever I'm see the, you. did you ever see the uh, horror movie that came out maybe 15 years ago called Teeth? No. Oh, no. wait. That's the one about the chick with the. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Peter, it's, do it's, you have any yeah. idea what we're talking about? No, it's the chick with the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> take, 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 take a stab at it. Take a stab. Okay. At so it. this. Don't Google chick, it. Don't Google it. I'm not Googling it. Uh, so, so it's the movie's called Teeth. I've heard Forrest give a piece of the premise away. Yeah. So this chick has got teeth inside of the uh, her pussy. And these teeth, she just go. she's a prostitute, this woman. That's how she makes her money, gets her drug money. And she goes around just serial killing and destroying men and their genitalia. How'd I do? Yep. Te yeah. Teeth. Hollywood. That's teeth. It. That's the movie. That's it. Perfect. Just... She's, she's not a prostitute, but that's yeah. otherwise that's the film. <laughs> I don't know Isn't if that's serious insane? or not. I swear that to God. What? Yeah. yeah. It's just teeth in her <laughs> vagina that look like a cookie cutter shark's mouth. Yep. yep. And she just steals really wieners. Yep. It's genius. She's a wiener thief. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine, like, man, it, Patrick and I, we sat in so many rooms with so many people who make way, much, way more money than we do. And we've been like, all right, here's this really well thought out thing. You know, where it's going to make a scientific impact. We're going to do this particular expedition we're going to research this thing that hasn't been researched you know here are all these things oh and we're going to do it for like one one hundredth of a, the cost of a hollywood movie probably less than that <laughs> yeah then, much much less much less than that yeah, yeah much much less than that and they're like mm, no we're not going to do that and then some other idiot sat in a room was like guys pussy with teeth 
Just and like that. <laughs> Daniel Cool said collects wieners. Also sounds like my ex, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Dude, I so I'm working on a project right now that you know, everything I work on starts as a TV idea, right? It is yeah. how it starts because that's how I fucking pay them bills for all them spaghettios I be eating. That's and uh, it. yeah, and uh, Bless you, Sean. so but it's sorry, but I'm working with real scientists on this thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real geologists, fucking space archaeologists, really looking to make this cool discovery, yeah. uh, which I hopefully we'll be able to talk about a lot more on a podcast, but. So we start talking about, okay, cool. So like, how, what are we going to do for TV? And like, how are we going to, so the more we're getting into it and the more I realized that there's real science happening, I was like, let's just stop the idea of doing this for TV. Let's just do this because <laughs> as soon as we go around and pitch this, they're going to be like, oh, you're going to discover something cool. Where's the treasure? Uh, how do right. we wedge in a cryptid? Right. Exactly. Uh, I was just like, let's just fucking do this, man. This isn't that expensive. Let's just do it. And if we right. discover something, then we can just, then we'll just film it. And yep. Maybe we'll totally. sell it as a documentary or maybe not, you know, but like, God, the way shit gets bastardized, man. It's, it's just crazy. so crazy. It's I crazy. mean, uh, you know, whatever. Let's not. Forrest, uh, Remix Garden wants to know if you can speak Shona live on air. I don't know what that means. Is uh, that bikini, uh, bikini. Um, it's the it's <laughs> small peeny weenie. Yep, you got it. Uh, it's the native language of Zimbabwe, um, where I grew up. So, uh, you know, I used to be, I, I don't think I was ever fluent. That's probably the wrong word. But I was, I, I could get by. Um, and, right. You know, you've, I've gone 20 years without speaking it other than the th four times I've been back to Zimbabwe. So it's, uh, it's faded if, terribly. If I wanted to, no, go ahead. If, if I wanted to go to Zimbabwe, walk into a bar and get my ass kicked by every single person in it what would i say oh man well there's a there's a word that is said in blood diamonds that begins with a k that i'm not going to say that is a very offensive word it's kind of like the n word but in africa oh. and uh okay. it used to be used a lot kind of like the n word right and if you said that word it it no to Africans would ever call themselves that. They're no, no, whoop, he gone. That's um, fine. We'll keep going. Yeah. They're just, there'd never be like, you know, what up my, this word. Gotcha. Um, ever, ever, ever. It's so offensive. Um, and so it literally doesn't matter what your skin color is, where in the continent of Africa you are. If you even said that word, you would, you'd be destroyed. And I'm not going to say that. How about just word. like, <laughs> what if I just wanted to say, hey guys, you can all suck my dick. Um, well, why, why would you do that? I don't know why you'd say that. Yeah. What's the matter with uh, you? Well, you, you Pat, walk are you okay? You're bar, slurring. You say, like, like a uh, snoozeberry before the fucking <laughs> podcast or what? Snoozeberry. I, I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to say some words in Shauna. Shauna is a ridiculous language. For instance, when you wake up in the morning, it's, it's an African tribal language. It's not ridiculous. It's rad. But to a Western ear, it sounds unbelievably odd. It's like when you get up in the morning, there's a greeting where you, you wake up and you say, Mangwanani, Mamuka say. And then the response is, Mamuka and Damukao. And then you say back, Damuka. And that whole thing is what two people do every single morning because it's like <laughs> the polite way of saying good morning. And then the person says back to you, Good morning, how are you? And you say, I'm well, thanks. But it's like everything kind of sounds the same, right? It's like, Mangwanani, Mamuka say, and Damuka, Mamukao, and Damuka. And that's it. You I, just had a whole see, conversation. I kind of I I love like, it. I like it. Yeah, because it's. See, what we do now is we fill our fucking time. It's like, eh, eh. it's a nod and a groan. Right. Bones and eat our <laughs> fucking toast. Like, I prefer it to be like something more filler, time consuming, so that I'm more engaged with the world for a few minutes in the morning. Right. English. Right. And that, that is one of the nice things about Shauna and the Shauna culture. It's all nice. You're having another drink. I like that. It's all very respectful, like it's very polite, you know, like there's no way in which you'd wake up and like grunt at somebody like you have to, you know, this is how you greet someone in the morning. And it's, yeah, I don't know. It's awesome. yeah, yeah. But one of the other things, and this is kind of fun for the bros, so Shauna is a tribal African language. So there's a lot of words that didn't exist when white people moved to, to Zim, what was Zimbabwe or, or Rhodesia, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of words that are bastardized English words that are just they're just so quaint and awesome for instance motorbike in zimbabwe 
is mududu bike because it goes oh that's <laughs> fun by the way yeah. what's more fun to say f like mududu bike exactly. mududu bike exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. Mududu bike. and then there's like a million others like that but where the words are just super fun because they're they just took like a sound or a hearing or something that they thought and translated that into a Shauna word like mududu bike. Um, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. It's a fun language. I like it. It's simple. English is very complicated. It makes no like trying to learn English, not so knowing check, English. Check this out. Here's a story for you. I, I love this. I, I was telling this to Jess the other day. So we're in, in Mexico for Mitch's wedding. The one thing you want to do is I've never done this before. We all stay in an all inclusive resort, like one of those giant, like five hotels on the premises. And I've never done it before. It's actually really fun because I thought I'd hate it because it's the kind of thing my parents never would have taken me to as a kid. And so doing yeah. it as an adult, I was like, this is awesome. Um, not saying I do on repeat, but so in this all inclusive resort, you make a dinner reservation. There's a hibachi grill in a Mexican all inclusive resort. And I'm like, fuck it, let's go get hibachi. Yeah. So I sit down. So I'm from Zimbabwe. My my wife's from San Francisco. We sit down at a hibachi grill <laughs> in Mexico with a Mexican chef next to a family of Russians. Okay. <laughs> this is a little true story. Yeah. The common language is English. And I was pointing this out to Jessica. I'm like, look at this. This is insane. I've got a Mexican chef making Japanese food with an African and American and a family of Russians in Mexico. And we're all speaking English. That is like, so yeah. strange. It's How what weird. a weird moment to just have it dawn on you. Like, wow. It, it dawned yeah. on me right then. The common language throughout the world is the language that we're lucky enough to have grown up speaking and everybody else had to learn in order to service idiots like us, basically. Um, uh, it works out great for like dumb dums like me, simpletons who could never and, learn. And it's a such language. a complex language. It's like one of the hardest languages. But yeah, right. it was total like aha moment, like you said, Patrick, where I was just sitting here looking yeah. around at this blending of people and cultures and things. And I was like, what a weird scenario. Yeah. You yeah. smirking over there. And I think I know why. Rust. Uh, a few requests now in. Jacob Gifford, can we yep. get a live spin kick? Kick it. Uh, <laughs> well, part, part of the situation here is that I'm going to have to move my weight bench first because uh, it's underneath the bench. And I, I mean, you know, Forrest has to do something after I spin kick it then. That's fine. All right, let's do it. Yes. You guys, you guys hold down the fort. What a weird I love show this is for me. That. How Pat has like a Christmas decorations, a tree set up, and everything in the house, and yet he's still broadcasting from the side. <laughs> he, he missed it. <laughs> Look great, man. Look great. I, I great had to, well, the thing is, the thing is, there's. I fucked it up. Yeah, it was one more. You got yeah. one more chance. Yeah. One more chance. <laughs> broadcasting again, right. live from the saw dungeon, alive. <laughs> That looks pretty good. That's good. That's good. Oh, he shuddered. He kicked the he garage. He scared himself. Yeah. Great point on that you, one, too. You scared yourself based on your own kick. Well, it, see, it's up against the garage door, and I didn't want to kick it through the garage door. So I kicked it about 50% power, but it still smashed the garage door. And my dog is now barking in the house. So <laughs> Rob Roberts. I like that you think that you're capable of kicking a punching bag through your garage door. It's a very, it's a very thin door. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically tin foil. All yeah, right, well, that makes you yeah. next time I have a picture of me on the bag. Oh, there you go. No, your face is too wide for that bag. Uh, oh. Yeah, people are calling Older. me meager. Uh, look, ooh, Taekwon, don't. That's good. <laughs> that's a joke that I look. That's that's a joke that I would make. I'm uh, gonna give you a ten out of ten, man. Come the, the second one was actually reasonable for him. I mean, I feel like if you pulled that out against a really drunk person who had never been in or seen a fight, you might kick him in the stomach. Yeah. Would you pull out the no. same excuse and say you have to move your weight bench first before you kick that person? I had to move you... the weight bench. I'm just saying. I was right there. Okay. All right. I think we should play a game. I think you guys know what time it is. Oh, I do. I got one from a broster that I think is kind of fun. It's a simple one. It's not what we typically do, but uh, I think it'll match the theme of tonight's very lackadaisical pod. Love it's one of the greatest things. podcasts we've ever done. 
easily. We always said number 82 was going to be the, the best one. one. The, the best yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Are you going to know, know what time it is? Do you know what time it is? Time! What? The battle! <laughs> Wow, that was something. Um, what is it? So this is this has been a live. We've been engaging a lot with the brosters. Par lack, par underscore lack suggested this one a while ago. It's very simple. Hmm? The Dead Sea is named for the insane salt concentration that prohibits life of bacteria and microorganisms. What, if in a parallel universe, it's got its name for a different reason? What would be? Oh wait a minute, and there's more to it. Um, no, that's that's silly. What would be your C? This one out. That's, no, that's it. What would be your C? The sulfur C? Is it a, is it a lake of lava that's Ooh, filled this, with, with weird critters? Like, unfortunately, this is going to get a bunch of thumbs down in the chat. I think. You think that's a mess? A little bit. I'll try and do. I'll try and do one that a broster submitted, but that's the only one I've got. If you got some <laughs> live chat, throw in, throw out some. Oh VR. yeah, yeah. Throw out first, some and we'll fucking do it. Okay. Also, they love uh, right. Bizarre Animal of the Week. Hazel, we have to do that every, every podcast from now on. Because I love oh, it too. I was the, reason, the reason I went PP on the uh, thing was because I, I was like, I don't think I can do this right now. Yeah, I, look, <laughs> I drink a full bottle of wine. I was just trying to come up with something <laughs> from the boys. I knew Ooh, there was aquarium battle. Uh, let's see, aquarium battle. Uh, what else? Best mythical steed to ride up on. The ultimate uh, and make, make them fight. Ooh, I like this one. Create an animal that you could dr you'd want to drink at an airport bar with. Done. Max yeah, Max. yeah. Sorry to everyone else. That's Done. that's got to win. Who came All up right. with that one? Who is that? That is Logan Trust. Second shout out on the pod. Thanks, Logan. Logan All right. Trust. All right, snake draft, animal critter, three three parts. Right, that you want to drink with at an airport bar. Yes, and and you've got to have good logic. That's how you're going to win this. For sure. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Well, um, definitely win this. I can though. go first. Yeah. Go first. Yeah. Why don't you go first? Yeah. I uh, so I sit down at the bar early in the day. I want someone that's going to entertain me, but I'm looking for somebody that's a liability. Like I don't want to personally be scared of them, but I want to see them do something shocking while I'm at the airport. Like. I'm looking for the Karen of the airport, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking, that's smart. That's smart. Yeah. That's so smart, mate. I could trigger them and watch them go off on the waiter, make a scene, whatever it is, because it's, it's going to entertain me for, for a long time. So okay. my first animal is the head and demeanor of a Spanish bullfighting bull. There's a real hot-headed bull in a china oh, shop. Yeah, I see what you're literally. doing. Literally. Yeah. yeah, I see what you're doing. So essentially, you're what because you're in for a long haul. Your flight's been delayed, I presume. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so you know, after like you're gonna have six, seven drinks. Yeah, I'm gonna sit there for a while. The you know the bull's got stories. He's very triggerable. Like you know, one one person could look at the bull wrong, and I could be like, I don't know, man. He did look at you kind of funny. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Seen, like the whole airport's in in a state of chaos. And this is not someone. And keep in mind. The person you meet at the airport bar, it's not someone you want to stay friends with long term. Like this person would be a nightmare of a friend for me long term. But while at the airport, this is going to exactly. be very interesting. It's going to be good. That's the yeah. advantage of the airport bar. You never have to yeah. speak to this person exactly. again. Exactly. So I'm, I'm, yeah. so I'm going to go next. Spanish bullfighting bull. I'm going to go next. When okay. you are in for the long haul, flight's delayed. Hmm. Boo hoo. I'll sit here longer. Actually very right. excited about it. Uh, I want to sit next to someone who's going to swap stories with me. I'd like okay. to hear a bunch of really good stories. Okay. So fair. I'm going to take the memory of an ocean quahog clam. Okay. <laughs> now this is one of the longest living animals. They live 500 to a thousand years. Yep. They've been around. They were there for the civil war. They were there for the revolutionary war. Uh, they're going to have so many good stories that I, I'm going to take just the memory of an 800 year old ocean quahog clam because the stories are going to be ridiculous. Oh, Wise the good. longevity. There's so oh, much to talk about. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, boy. Yeah. Very good. All right. I guess I'm up for three then, right? Or four? <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> what All a right. mess. So, so, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely want a companion, a, an animal that is going to, I want to chat, you know, but only with this animal or with my new friend. I don't want anybody else coming and interrupting our conversation. So I want an interesting animal that's smart. So my animal is going to have the brain of a dolphin. It's going to be smart. It's traveled all over the fucking ocean. It's going to tell me stories about deep sea creatures. Pat, keep your fucking gestures to yourself, right? It, and uh, it is, is going to be a, a, just a real treat to speak with and, and, and drink. <laughs> and drink. So when it goes, <laughs> you're going to go. No. What? What are you talking about? You're talking to a fucking clam. The memory of a clam. I said the brain of a fucking dolphin. You son okay. of a bitch. Right. Okay, That's sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't. I shouldn't have pooed on your thing. Yeah. And okay, um, write these down because they're gonna get elaborate. I can tell. Um. Okay. Please. We go. got okay. one more. And then so Deep. I I I tend to drink uh, white Russians when I'm at the bar. Sure. Sure. And, sure. You know the. It's expensive, so I'm going to smuggle in my own pint of vodka, a pint of Kahlua, and then my dolphin brain. We don't know what the box One part of the box a cow's udder that produces milk. So right now we have the brain and an udder of a cow so that I can make white Russians with my smuggled-in booze. Is, is there any this body is or... Is this just like an amorphous blob or like an ethereal being? No, no, they're, they're, it's going to have a body. I just okay. haven't gotten <laughs> He's going to add. Forrest, he's going to add a body. It's just, yeah. you know, right now he's got one udder and a brain <laughs> floating in a jar. So yeah. he can, he's no got jar. Something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pat. That's, that's some, that is really some wild nonsense. Um, sure <laughs> so. Daniel Cool said, I feel like this isn't the first time Retep has gotten a drink out of someone's udder in an airport. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> Good. Well, okay. I was reading an article about a uh, moose that got a drunk moose that got stuck in a tree uh, about a year okay. ago. Okay. And it was good. So the moose got very drunk. Moose, okay. Just like your favorite elephants in Zimbabwe, they ate, the moose ate too much fermented fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But with my flight delayed six and a half hours, I want a drinking buddy who has a reasonably good alcohol tolerance, right? Because I don't want to be with someone who's like going to have two beers in eight hours. But I also yeah. don't want to be with someone who's slurring, right? And gets yeah. silly, unlike yep. Forrest, who wants a drunk buffoon. That's so I'm, I'm going to take the, Mal <laughs> the Malaysian, the, uh, the liver. Mine will also have a body later. I'm going to take the liver of a yeah, Malaysian right? pentailed shrew, which is the animal on earth that is said to have the best alcohol tolerance of any animal because its diet almost exclusively is made up of fermented fruit. Uh, so it's going to be able to drink and drink and drink. So you, this yeah. animal is going to make you look like a fucking drunk homeless person sitting next well, to it. That's, say, that's right. You're going to die. Like, Patrick, I've known you a long time. You're yeah. not going to back down no. in a drink for drink with James, everybody. James R. Yeah. just said, just speaking to a guy who's sober, and he's absolutely right. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Uh, okay. Well, good point. But he's going through the motions, and I really appreciate that. But wait yeah. till I add the body. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So I've got the head and demeanor of a Spanish bullfighting bull. Real hot head, real touchy. Um, oh, yeah. You know, very buffoonish. And in order to, to trigger him, I've got to come up with something that, you know, I'm not going to acknowledge it because why would I? Like, I, I don't think that way. I'm very progressive. But sure. somebody will. Yeah. So I'm going to give him the body of a zebra because somebody in the bar is going to walk up and say, hey, Black with white stripes, white with black stripes. What is it? He's going to lose his shit. He's just going to go nuts. There's going to be like steam coming out of his nose from asking such an insensitive question. Whole bar's going down. It's it's going to be a treasure to just sit there and watch this world burn. <laughs> what a um, mess. Yeah. What a mess. It's, <laughs> Both of okay. you. I think it's okay. very logical. And then yeah. in addition... 
to the body of the zebra and, and the head of a bull, I'm going to give him the hands and feet of an orangutan because I do want him to sit there and have a few drinks. I think yeah. it's very difficult for a zebra to, to actually grasp the mug. Of the yeah. Zebra. Otherwise, you're feeding the zebra the whole time, right? Right. And that, you know, that could easily trigger him. So uh, I want to make sure he's sitting there having his own drinks when I very slowly approach. Um, so, yeah, that's my critter. So, Forrest, just to be clear to all the Brosners, you are not texting, you're writing down the yes, correct. Uh, I just want, because if you're texting, it's like, hey, fuck off, guys. Uh, well, I'm, yeah. Here I am making notes because for those that are listening for the first time, I always recap what they are. That, that and is correct. And you remember all of these. Um, so Ethan Engbert had a good, Ethan Engbert had a good point. He's got to be sober to talk about the Revolutionary War, which I was going to say myself. So look, I've got this awesome memory of this 800 year old animal that's seen everything. Clan. They can go Not drink for drink. An animal. They can go. This it certainly is. They can go drink for drink. And so now I've got to put it in the sort of body and visage of something, right? I need a corporal form to yep. put these, this great liver and this awesome memory into. And yep. so what I first, what I wanted to do was I want to, I want other people who see me having this amazing conversation about the revolutionary war to, to get a laugh when they see me talking to the animal. So I thought, what's the funniest animal to see a human having an amazing conversation with, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, do I go with a big animal? Do I go with a strange animal? What do I do? I like the idea of just having a tiny animal. So I'm going to take an elephant shrew. It's okay. full corpse. And I'm going to put all those great qualities into a tiny little elephant shrew that's just sitting on the bar but it's what it's going to be doing is i'm in my bar stool and it's just sitting on the bar facing me yeah. right next to my drink yeah, um okay. and it's going to be hilarious people are going to take pictures it's going to be instagram it's, worthy. Out of a it's got a thimble yeah. for a cup it's yeah so tiny and yes. you're just constantly yep. filling it up because of the uh the, the liver yeah i'll get yeah. fucking bottle service they don't do that at airports but i'll try yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> peter round it out Go ahead, pick herpes. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna pick herpes. Shut the fuck up. Um, What's with your lights? Is your is your girlfriend turning the light on and off behind you? What is going no, on back there? I I have uh, I have Windows Notepad up on the two side monitors, and then whenever I bring something up on one, it blocks the light. Copy. It's a new office, a new. Um. Okay, so I have the hot intelligent brain of a dolphin that has traveled the world in the oceans all over the fucking place with pods very friendly playful pods. creatures well he knew he knew the word pods and uh right now that brain is just long with about 10 inches below it a cow's udder that will provide me milk for my white russians and yep. allow me to spend a lot less drinks are expensive very expensive at airport bars even and, the and grossest dirtiest ones it's really yes. the milk where your cost is coming from, too. That's exactly. Yeah, it's, it's real high dollar if, milk. If you have your own milk and you order just a black Russian, which is a white Russian without milk, it's like a dollar. And then they upcharge you they're like 14 for the for the milk. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I told you I'm going to smuggle in the vodka. <laughs> so, uh, okay. so listen, if you call me an idiot one more time, <laughs> I'm off! I'm done with the pot! <laughs> And <laughs> it's unnecessary. All right. So you're right. My Your body therapist told you that. So did mine. <laughs> Forrest, Forrest is too young to have a therapist just yet. Sure, I mean, right, four sure, years. Right. <laughs> yep. yep. My body will be friends. I do not want anybody coming over other than the person I am engaged with. This creature I'm engaged Smart. with, this beautiful brain, this beautiful mm. utter. So I want my <laughs> scare off any potential predators yeah, from petting for? or touching or <laughs> dealing with this animal. It is going to be my friends and utter a brain and a porcupine spotty. That's right. The utter will be sitting there on the bar. The yeah. brain oh, will be whoa. inside of the head. What? You were, you were actually doing well there and then you farted on your own shit. I, mean, I don't what no my logic is fucking is flawless. You I don't want anybody your nappy, son. 
<laughs> Nobody's going to come by a porcupine and touch it or talk yeah. to it. I'll be the I only just one like talking. One of your three priorities for the creature that you're going to hang out with in the airport is producing milk. That's what you need. <laughs> you're like, well, there's anything that it could do. I just want it to produce no, milk. No, no, Forrest. Then he wanted to take the scariest animal in the whole kingdom, and he chose a 21-pound porcupine. A big one will touch it. It only can prick you if it moves backwards. What in no, the? It, shoot. it shoots quills. <laughs> they fucking they sure do Clam, son they of know. a bitch. They, 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 they back up into you, you mate. You're, yeah. you're, you're, uh, well, before you do the recap and before. And look at Pat. He's just dying to get out of here. So this makes this even more. No, fun not. I've never had more fun in my life. Neff. Forrest, <laughs> you owe us something because I shot. Spun kick. Pat, what's he going to do for the Brosners? Brosners, what do you want him to do? Yeah, let's give them let's give them 12 seconds. Oh yeah, this is this What do you guys better. what do you guys want for us to do? I do want him flip. to shotgun a can of milk. I don't know where to get a can of milk. I'm I can do a roly poly. I don't know how to do a flip because I'm an adult man. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Randy K wins. Forrest rave dance. Rave dance. Oh sure, yeah, that's. Oh, hang bow. on, I got music bow. for him. Okay. I gotta find. It. Oh, yeah. What's well, he doing? Stretch. I'm getting older these days. <laughs> His head's cut off, but we can see the body. Here we go. Hold on. Uh, oh, okay. I even had a. So I actually have a glow stick right here. Stick <laughs> Why? I Why? knew I was gonna rave dance tonight. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of support okay. for rave dance. Yeah. Ow, yeah. Ow. Well, yeah, that's, it, that's what you do in a rave. Like you guys go next to me, then you just throw your arms around like that. And feel the motion. I mean, yeah, you just, I'm going to be frank. They look quite good. Really? Look, yeah. 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 Yay. Good. Because that was really pulling that out of thin air. I'm just, I was going to pull my shirt off, but I had a really big meal. And I didn't felt self conscious about it, so I didn't do it. Oh, you yeah. look beautiful. I mean, your body is magnificent. A wonderland. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go first when I sign off. Okay. Thank you to all of you who joined. What a blast! The comments are legitimately funny. Yeah, uh, right. You guys are undeniably the best. Thank you so much, Retep. Stop showing off your nude body. All right, I we love you guys. Thank you. Your bullshit eat it's dicks. been a lot of fun. Oh, also, by the way, decorate your houses for Christmas. Enjoy yourself. It's been a weird 19, 20 months. Uh, this whole COVID thing has fucked us all up. Put up your fucking Christmas tree, especially if you have a fake one. Put out the garland. Put the wreath up. Start drinking some red wine. You know what? Let's gain 8 to 10 pounds. Let's do it. Yeah, that is good pad advice right there. That's that's some good pad advice. What do you got? What do you got for us? Thank you. Yeah, you know, weigh in. I'm not going to recap it. Just just let us know who won the Battle Royale. A lot of us have let us know in the comments already. In the live, yep. it's obviously not the milk-producing porcupine. Um, but, uh, you know, weigh in. Let us know. Thanks for making us do funny challenges. Retap, do the thing. Do the thing, guys. You know where to go. Thank you for joining us on the live. All 10,300 that joined today. It was amazing. You know where the links are at the wildtimespodcast.com forward slash info. Uh, the Patreon, tell your friends. That is patreon.com. It's pod. All the social pod. And, you know, just listen to the podcast once a week for a month. Uh, Patreon. A bunch of other shit. AMAs. Ooh, that was fun. Yeah, we got to do more. Yeah, of those. we got to do another Patreon. one of those soon. Yeah. Those are fun as shit. That's the most fun. I, those are, I think, I love doing these. Those are really fun because it's just like a group yeah. hang. hang we got to do it earlier. I, last time I feel like everyone was on the East Coast and they were just like, fuck, it's like midnight. Yeah. Yeah. The AMA on the Patreon. So we're all on video just hanging out on a fucking chilling Zoom call. Hanging out chat. on a fucking chilling. Doing- Chilling, chilling, doing the Zoom call, and legitimately, uh, last time we did it, it was better than a session of therapy. Good night, everybody. We love you. Thanks for Good joining. Night. Hey, Ritzep. Yeah. Don't you ever come at me again, boy. I'm not going to come <laughs> on you, you son of a bitch. Again. Oh, that's weird. That's weird. That's weird.
course. The, what's with the creepy outfit, man? Why are you lying? You gotta look the part, dude. I got the mushroom on the shirt, I got the neck knife. It's great. It's part huh. of it. I'll, I'll accept yeah. it. Are you going to stop it at some point? This is so embarrassing every time at the end of the night. People love this so will, will you stop it? Because we're still live, you, you dumb I know, motherfucker. I know. Hold on. It's, it's very confusing. There's <laughs> it's years. not. I couldn't do it if I had a thousand years to figure it out, but you, technical genius. Yeah, it's your, it's your one job. No, it's just yeah. the computer's slow and I have it's to... It's to have luxuriant hair. Okay. A lovable demeanor. Uh, Okay, 